Alright, so if you guys are anything like me, you might really enjoy fixing up old equipment like this uh, late 80s, early 90s tractor. One of the most common problems with machinery like this is that the lights on them just perpetually don't work right. The, the wiring on this machine was so bad that when I reached up underneath the dashboard for the first time to try and figure out that spaghetti bowl of wires, you know, you pull on this wire and you hear this disconnected piece like arcing against the, uh, the side of the, the hood compartment there. It's really, really bad. So in situations like this, what I recommend is just absolutely gutting the wiring and starting over because there's really not too much on an old mechanically injected machine like this that you have to wire. So that's what I did. I ripped everything out and um, since then I've wired in a, a charging circuit and a starting circuit and today we're going to be working with the lights. So if you're starting with something like this where uh, there's basically no functional wiring on it, what I recommend is buying a universal fuse box. You can buy them on Amazon pretty cheap. And, uh, and wiring in a hot lead to that, and then we're gonna wire in our, our switch box over here, which is what we're actually about to start putting together, and then we're gonna wire that into the fuse box. We have fuses to protect our lights and our circuitry. So, yeah, we basically just need, first things first here, a steel box that's gonna hold the three switches for the three lighting circuits we're gonna put together today. So, let's see if we can get one of those put together, and we'll take it from there. So anytime you're working on something like this, these rubber grommets really are your friends. They're really cheap. You can buy them in bulk online. And what this does is it protects the insulation on our wires from rubbing up against the side of our steel box and wearing through, causing short starting fires, that sort of thing. Hey, have you later. Sweet. Hindsight being 2020, I should have cut that out on the CNC while I was at it. I don't claim to be an expert riveter, but I feel like this is a textbook rivet job pretty much as soon as I saw it. The reason for that, rivets are great for binding sheet metal together, and unlike bolts and screws, they don't lock themselves out loose from vibration from the machine. So what's really cool is these new LED taillights I bought, they actually fit in here so uh, so they can sit behind the surface of this piece of material so they're really nice and protected from the elements and from idiots backing the tractor into things. Just under 14 hours into this day, but that's alright because I'm kind of enjoying it and progress is being made on this. And then from the fuse block we've got these red wires, I gotta come back and hide all this stuff of course. But the red wires come in here and they feed these switches. So the headlights are on their own dedicated circuit and then on the other circuit I kind of piggyback this switch off of this one here. But on that circuit we have W for work light and F for flashers. So the work light's really useful. It's just that LED fixture right there and that shines directly behind the tractor so we can see uh, the implement that we're using if we have to run this thing late at night and the flashers. Also fairly self-explanatory. Now they don't normally flash by themselves, so I picked up this uh, universal relay. I think it's like a motorcycle turn signal relay or something. But all this stuff, it just gets tucked good and tight up in here. And uh, the last two things, the flasher relay needs its own ground. Yeah, and also the USB thing needs its own ground. This is probably the only Zetter UR1 series tractor in the world with a USB port built into it. I don't know, that's a bold statement, but maybe. So, you know, if I'm uh, operating this thing for long hours, I can just plug my phone in there or whatever, so hopefully that'll be kind of nice. Let's uh, get this all closed up. So you can see this is simple circuitry. I mean, literally anyone who has a basic fundamental knowledge of working with their hands and understands crimp, crimp connections and the most basic wiring can do it. However, I will say if you rewire something like this, when in doubt, get a GM one wire alternator because this one still uses its original um, voltage regulator, which is hidden up in here to dictate when or not the alternator is charging. And uh, that was not easy to install. That required some quality time with my good friend mechanic Steve, but he was really cool and helped me get it wired up. And uh, so let's do this and then try it out. I also installed this battery disconnect switch. Uh, this has a number of purposes. It works to really simplify the wiring. It keeps things from getting discharged if the tractor isn't used for a while. 
and uh, makes it so that if some mice get in and they eat the wiring on your on your machine, it doesn't burn down the shed. All right, nothing bad's happened. We got a 15 amp fuse for each of those um, 10 gauge red wires going into this. Fingers crossed. Oh yes. Oh, that's really cool. Do we have red lights? Those are supposed to be coming on too. All right, I can look into that. But I even managed to wire in the tractor's old incandescent bulbs on top of the nice new LEDs. Let's see, work light. That's a welcome sight. Look at that lighting difference. And keep in mind, we're in a pretty well lit building. All right, now the real question, the flashy oars. Oh, it friggin' works. I got that relay set up properly on my first try. How about that? You can hear it clicking. It all works, everybody. I'm really happy with this. All right, guys. This is the last piece of the dashboard, which isn't on the tractor. And we're putting this on right now because I think this is the final thingamajigger for this entire little rewiring project. And I sure hope so because it was fun, but I'm still ready to be finished with it. Oh, this is the kind of thing that requires like six hands. So now I believe the wiring on this machine is done. So let me give you guys the highlights here. We've got this main battery disconnect switch down here. And this does a number of things. It keeps the battery from draining when the tractor sits. Uh, if there's ever like a major electrical problem, you just turn it off and it kills everything. And, uh, that, and also if like mice or rats or whatever chew the insulation off your wires, it no longer burns down the barn as well. So we turn that on to start this thing. Also, starter doesn't work without the key installed. That's a nice touch because I've spent way too much time and energy on this thing for it to get jacked. We've got a working voltage meter right up here. On this side, we've got the switch control box, which we just put in. So with the battery turned on, you pull the switch, it starts uh, the two forward facing LED lights, also the tractor's original headlights. And then also the switch next to that is for the work light, which is this LED back here. And what this does is it makes it so you can see your, uh, your implement if you have to run something at night or you hitch something up before the sun's up in the morning or whatever. And then this one is the flasher, kind of self-explanatory. Turn the key on, this thing has not been running in, I don't know, like 14 hours or something. 